So one day my agent calls me and she's like, hey, Bill Keese, um, I think we may have a little problem. We, FIBA has a rule that bans certain headpieces or headgear. You can't wear anything larger than a headband. And so I'm like, oh, it's no problem. Let's just tell them that I'm Muslim. I choose to wear it. We can, I can sign a waiver. I thought it was that simple. It turned out that it wasn't. And that's when things got a little shaky for me. And so we did a petition. Myself and another Muslim woman did a petition. We got over 100,000 signatures thinking that was going to move the bar a little bit. FIBA was like, it doesn't matter. You can get all the signatures you want. We don't make changes until the board meets and we, if we, if we want to make that change. So after going back and forth through email with FIBA and a few representatives, communication just stopped. And at this point, FIBA just started to ignore everything. That's when it set in that I wasn't going to play basketball and that my career may have been over. And when you're an athlete and when you commit your entire life to something, whatever your profession is, your heart is in it. And at that moment, I was known as the Muslim basketball player. That's how people knew me on social media and videos when I would walk around. They were like, that's the Muslim girl who could hoop. But once basketball was taken away, I was just a Muslim. And that's when things start to set in. Was I doing that part of it right? So I remember at this crossroad when I could have easily taken off my hijab to go play, I had those thoughts. And I remember not really sharing that with anybody. I was in grad school at the time. I was working with my old basketball team that I played for in college. And I remember having these feelings of, man, I can just take it off for the 40 minutes of the game over there and then put it back on after. Nobody knows me in the country that I might go play in. Like, these were the thoughts that I was having. People would give me advice, the same type of advice, like, yeah, just take it off, doesn't it? Does it, that, does it matter that much? Of course, these were kind of non-Muslim saying this. Or, you know, it's okay. Like, this is your dream. You made it. You're really going to stop it because a piece of scarf, a piece of material. And subhanAllah, like, when people would say that to me, of course my immediate reaction would be, no, you know, it means more than that. The scarf is a symbol of who I am. And I would give them the textbook Islamic answer. But in my heart, I wasn't feeling it. At one point, I was ready to sign a contract and go overseas. But I knew that something in my heart didn't feel right. And all the advice that people, that pretty much humans were giving me, weren't fixing it. And I remember at that time questioning Allah. I was questioning Islam. Again, I was questioning hijab. I was like, why would Allah take away what I'm good at, what I loved, what I worked hard for? And when I reached the point where I was right there at the pinnacle of my dream, just take it away. Like, that was the, the thoughts. I was questioning Allah's will, His plan. So I remember the only thing that I could do was pray. And regardless of how much I was questioning Islam, of course, the only way I knew how to pray was Islamically. So I remember this prayer like it was yesterday, Wallahi, and if I could go back to the feeling that I had when I prayed this Salah. I was in sujood, and I felt like I couldn't get up. And I'm praying this prayer, and my head was stuck to the ground. And that's when I knew I was like, you know what, Allah, I need guidance because I don't know what to do anymore. And I was praying and I was stuck. I swear I could feel like the blood rushing towards my head. Like that's how long I was staying down there because that's how much guidance I needed. And I remember praying that prayer, finishing that prayer. I swear by Allah that I remember this. A day later, I was called to speak to youth in Indiana. This is Sunday school. Then a week later, I was invited out to another Islamic school. Things just started happening, and there was, it was so, so much good. And I was like, what is going on? And then what really hit me was when I was going to a basketball game one night with my friends, and at the time I used to wear my hijab in a turban style, right? And traditionally in, in my household, the neck should be covered, right? So, when I played, I would wear it in, in, in the turban style, and I just kind of got adapted to that way. I felt more comfortable that way, and I honestly 
didn't feel pretty with it wrapped around this way. So I remember getting dressed to go out with my teammates to go to this game, and I'm struggling with trying to put my hijab on. So I'm like, it's not going on right. You know how we have those struggle hijab days. And so I'm like, my friends are like, you got five minutes, come on, let's go. So I took it and I just draped it around, just how we would normally wear it. So I went into the gym and every person I walked by was like, Kesey, I like your scarf like that. It looks really pretty. And I'm looking like, bro, it's not even pinned up. Like, no way you don't like it like this. Every person I walked by, wow, Kesey, that looks really nice. You should wear it like that more often. And I'm like, this has to be a joke. Like inside, I'm like, I'm going through all of this stuff, systemically trying to figure out who I am. And I don't know what it was for people to tell me that I looked good with my hijab, traditionally the right way for me. And that was what I needed to confirm what Allah was doing for me. Allah tested me with basketball. He tested me with what I loved to see if I was going to choose Islam. 